Hi, it's Brene. I'm here to share another Michael Jackson adventure with you. Um, this time it's about the Madison Square Garden 30th anniversary concerts uh, where Michael performed uh, with his brothers and all these celebrities performed. It was televised. Um, it was a fantastic week. The show was recorded over two days. So the first recording was September 7th and then the second concert was held on September 10th. For the most part, they were almost the same, give or take some celebrity additions and subtractions, but um, it was two great, fantastic nights. But I wanna tell you first how I got there. So when Michael made the announcement about the concert, he announced that the first four rows from the stage were gonna be allocated for his fan clubs. So King of Pop Fanatics, where I was working at the time, and I'm still the East Coast chapter leader for that club, um, we had four tickets for each of those nights. So three of the tickets were accounted for because, you know, you have your president, your vice president, your treasurer, whatever. So they had to figure out how to do something with the last ticket. And King of Pop Fanatics, if you're not familiar, was basically by region. So you could be King of Pop Fanatics, New Orleans. You could be King of Pop Fanatics, Los Angeles, King of Pop Fanatics, Philadelphia, which is what I started as. And then I ended up being King of Pop Fanatics, East Coast chapter. So we had a lot of chapter leaders and trying to figure out how to determine who got that ticket was going to be tough. So they just figured the easiest way to do it would just do pick a number and whoever wins the ticket wins the ticket. So you know, I gave whatever number I gave and I was like, this is my ticket. I'm gonna be in one of those seats in the first four rows because I just sometimes get that feeling like this is where I'm supposed to be. And I remember they announced the winner and it wasn't me. And I was like, what the? Funny enough, I wasn't sad. I wasn't sad, I wasn't disappointed. I was confused. In my heart, I knew that that was my ticket. I can't really explain it. So the next day I get a call saying that the person who won the ticket um, wasn't gonna be able to travel because someone in their family had gotten really sick and they just couldn't take the time to travel to New York. So instead of having a contest all over again to see who won the ticket, they decided to just sit down amongst themselves and determine who they thought worked the hardest for their chapter in the club. And unanimously, they decided that I should be the winner. So it was my ticket after all. So I was so excited, I was so blessed, I was so happy. But what I didn't know is that our tickets were actually row one. Like seriously, row A, okay? I don't know if you can see that. I was section two, row A, seat 12, which means there is nothing in front of us but the stage. So here is the, you're not gonna be able to see this, but this right here is the box where the stage is. And then this little dot right here above the stage, you can't probably see it. Anyway, that was my seat. I was directly in front of Randy Jackson. But anyway, so that's how I ended up getting a front row seat for the 30th anniversary Madison Square Garden. I'm telling you, it was meant to be. I felt it in my spirit. It was meant for me to be in that seat. Night two, um, as you can see, I have two tickets because my cousin came and went with me. Um, those tickets, we just got like the cheap $90 tickets. And um, I'm not gonna tell you how much the front row tickets were. Even though they were allocated for us from the club, it was still a fee. But um, for the next night on the 10th, we had rows, um, seats on the side of the stage. And it was the same side that Michael set on because when Michael wasn't performing, he was actually in the audience watching the other performance. So I had a view of the back of his head. I wasn't close to him. I had to kind of look down, but there he was. So anyway, those were just great seats all together. Being in the front row with Donna Green and with Rebecca Reza and Lissette on night one is still probably one of the most memorable things that's ever happened to me. I can't find myself on any footage, but that's okay because I know I was in that front row. And on the second night, um, I don't know, it didn't even matter if I was in the front row or not. I was still so excited. But let me tell you a little bit about um, the show itself. Um, the first night, you know, it was all that controversy. People were talking about how skinny Whitney Houston was and all that stuff. I'm telling you, I don't remember any of that. It was such a 
beautiful and amazing night that Whitney Houston's weight was like the furthest thing from my mind. It was just celebrity after celebrity. I mean, we got to see Usher. We got to see Destiny's Child. Um, I can't even remember. I just know it was so many people. Chris Tucker was there. Marlon Brando was there. Um, Marlon Brando was kind of mean one of the nights. I can't remember which night. Um, I'm sure somebody that was there will probably put it in the comment section. But anyway, the last time I left Michael in Germany, I had to leave him in the hospital. This event was just as tragic. So we're here all week. We're having fan parties. We're hanging out at the red carpet because the MTV Music Awards was somewhere in that week also. Um, we didn't see anybody except for Puff Daddy, but we still got to have that moment. And it was just such a nice week. So at the end of the second concert, which was the night of the 10th, me and my cousin kind of um, hung out outside thinking that maybe if we go to the side entrance, we would see Michael Levin or some other celebrities. We did end up seeing a rapper, Rod Digga. Um, I wasn't there to see her, but she was the only person we end up seeing. But I think we end up leaving New York around three or four in the morning to head back to the train station in Delaware. So we get on the train. Now it's like three in the morning. We go back to Delaware. My cousin drives me from the train station to my house. I go home, get in the bed, get under my covers, and I'm just in la-la land because I just had this whole Michael week. Within like three hours, my phone is ringing nonstop. And I'm like, why are people calling me at like 8.45, 9 o'clock in the morning? Like they know I had this concert. They know I was with Michael all week. Let me sleep. But my phone kept ringing and ringing. Finally, I wake up and my, it's my sister, Tammy. Oh my God, are you still in New York? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm home. I came home this morning. Oh my God, the world's under attack. Oh my God, 9-11 had happened. Like it's insane that I was just there that morning, not even the night before. Like I had literally just left New York that morning, just a few hours ago. And then the towers got hit. And it was just so chaotic. I just could not believe I had another Michael event ending so tragically. I have friends that were stuck in New York forever. All the planes were grounded. You know, you couldn't take any transportation. The cell phone service was down. I mean, you know, you have to figure how expensive that week was for people coming to see Michael from overseas. And then to be stuck there beyond what you budgeted Oh my God, it was just so horrible. You know, I know that my friend Vita was one of the people that um, helped out some fans because she lived in the area, but so many people were stuck and it was such a tragic ending. And again, I'm worrying about Michael. I was like, why can't me and Michael just part ways peacefully? Last time he was in the hospital. Now I don't even know where he is. Is he alive? I didn't know where he was staying in relation to the towers. It was just another anxiety filled event and it's crazy because I had to put this memory of how fun it was to be in the front row and being that close to him all of this had to be put on the back burner because it wasn't appropriate to share this type of memory I mean we had literally just lost thousands of lives you know and not just there remember the Pentagon was attacked and I mean it was just chaos you know, and then we had that other plane that went down before it got to its destination and people died on that. It was children on these planes. So as spectacular and perfect as this Michael week was, it was something that sadly had to be pushed back for a while. You know, all, those, all that fun, all those memories, because all we had in front of us was death. All we had in front of us was tragedy. All we had was fear. What's going to happen next? What's going to, you know, so now looking back you know i was looking through the pictures and i have my receipts for hotel pennsylvania which was directly across from madison square garden i have these pictures um i gave up trying to show you too many pictures because the glare from the light the ring light it's you're not gonna be able to see anything but um at some point i'm gonna have to do a video where i just show you the visuals because it's just so much so many happy memories from that moment. I mean, even down to me remembering the first night on the 7th when I had the front row seat, walking back to the hotel directly across the street, my feet hurt so bad that I had to limp with my shoes off. Who wears high heels that you can't even walk in to a Michael Jackson concert? 
this fool. I don't even know how to walk in heels, okay? So like little things like that, I just remember and I, I shared the hotel room with my friends, Liz, Vita, and Christopher, may he rest in peace, and Lay. And uh, I know we hooked up with Reva at some point and it was just such a great time, you know? And it was so hurtful that it had to end so sadly. I mean, it was unimaginable, nothing that any of us could ever even dream of happening. You know, um, I was happy once I started hearing, of course, that Michael was safe, that my my friends and my fans, not my fans, but Michael's fans were safe. And there was a few people missing and, you know, people were on social media. Have you seen this fan? Have you seen this fan? I remember one was missing for a really long time. Um, they just were kind of off the radar, but they ended up being okay. But, you know, it was just, I felt like, you know, what is happening? Why can't I just go see Michael and it just end like it's supposed to? But um, that was really great because I just remember how excited I was to see him do Billie Jean. I had seen it already, but to be this close right here in the front row, you know, and then he did You Rock My World and um, he performed with his brothers and he looked so nice wearing all white. Um, I was just really blessed to be there and be a part of that. And I'm still grateful to King of Pop Fanatics for picking me to share that front row opportunity with them because otherwise I definitely wouldn't have been there. So um, I don't know if you have any questions, put them in the comments or if you remember your own experience, if you're one of the people that were stuck there after 9-11, I would love to hear how you made it through. What did you do? Where did you sleep? Um, you know, how did you eat? I was just so worried about people and there was nothing that we could do, you know? So um, I'll end it by saying a month later, Michael decided to do a CD signing at the Virgin Mega Store in New York. And I'm like, am I gonna go back to New York? Because me and Michael's parting, we, we don't have a good vibe. It just seems like things always end crazy. And I was really afraid to go back to the city, really, really scared to go back to New York. So I had to decide, is Michael worth me taking this chance to go back to New York? So you'll have to wait to see what I decided. But um, please post your comments. Let me know if you were there, how you made out, what did you do, how the tragedy affected you, and, um, and share positive memories as well. I look forward to it. Thank you.